part one of our Sledgehammer Secret Squirrel Mods is back. Let's check it out. So if you've been following along with our Sledgehammer Electric Turbo Saga, we are now at the point of trying to make the thing more efficient. And towards that end, we sent the volute, actually the whole business end minus the motor basically, to line to line coatings to get the volute coated with their abradable coating. Let's open the box together. By the way, today's knife is a case Texas toothpick. <laughs> Swag. Swaggy swag. So here we go. You may have heard of line to line coatings because they do like piston skirt coatings and stuff, but lately they've been doing turbo specifically volute coatings. And that's effectively what this is. It's a centrifugal compressor anyway, even though it's a supercharger. Let's check it out. Maybe a little hard to distinguish the various shades of gray, but this is actually like a dark gray, almost black. And it's, it has a really interesting texture, actually. It's a lot smoother than I expected it to be. I can tell already that the clearance between the impeller and the volute is actually very, very tight. In fact, let's see. There's a little bit of interference in there. But I expect there to be. There's supposed to be because it's supposed to be self-clearing. That's the whole abradable coatings part. Well, let's take it apart. Let's take a look. Let's check this thing out. So OEMs, like I believe Audi's doing this to their turbos, except they're using a uh, ceramic coating. And what's interesting is they don't coat the entire volute. They just coat the center section and the radius. And I believe line to line told me that they're going to do the same thing. Let's see what it actually looks like. By the way, if you want to get a hold of line to line and have them do this to your turbo, I'll put the contact information in the description below. They're pretty cool guys. And of course, like I said, they also do piston skirts and other things. So check them out. But this is our little secret squirrel stuff. And we will definitely find out if it's worth something, but I can't see how it wouldn't be. Particularly once it's self-clearanced to perfection. All right, so now it's disconnected. Let's see. Now there's no interference. It's literally that close. I can't even squeeze it so there's interference. Interesting. All right, let's carefully lift this off. After all, it is an abradable coating. First thing, let's take a look at the, the volute and see if there's any excessive wear or anything. Nope, looks pretty much exactly how I sent it to them. Looks good. All right, and now the grand reveal. And they did not take it all the way out to the uh, edge. Let's take a close look. So yeah, it's just a black matte finish that's abradable. They did not take it all the way out to the, the tips. And actually, Audi doesn't either with their ceramic coating. There must be a reason for it. It's above my pay grade. Feel free to speculate in the comments because I don't know. And if I look at my quick little cleanup port work job that I did, it actually looks like they warmed it up a bit because it doesn't look like that, you know, raw, fresh cut aluminum anymore. But probably no surprise, I guess. I don't know how they cure this stuff or what it is. But what's interesting is I can feel kind of a lip right here where they masked it off. And to be honest, they sent me a picture of it masked off. Let's measure how thick that is, shall we? This isn't the best tool for the job, but it'll at least give us an idea if I stay consistent. Okay, I got 15 and a half thousandths there. Trying to replicate the technique as good as I possibly can. I got 18 thousandths there. Now, these numbers may not be actually real because it's not a good way. This is really not a good way to measure it. It relies on me replicating the action. But 14 and a half thou there. And let's go to the last quadrants. I'm trying to replicate this as, as good as possible. So I got 11 and a half thou there. 
just do a second measurement since that's the only one that's significantly different. Yeah, again, 11 and a half out. All right, so let's see. So this should be the thinnest. This should be thicker. Again, you know, don't know if this is accurate at all, but at the end of the day, what this, what this should do is should make the whole compressor more efficient by minimizing the, the gap. It's just that simple. And you know what I'm going to do is very carefully put this back on. And I'll take some pictures so you guys can see just how close this fit is. So with our last drag strip test, our last dyno test, we pretty much discovered a couple of things. One, the torque converter shot. And the other parts that we're dealing with is the fact that this compressor is actually slightly undersized. We're right around 722 flywheel horsepower and we're pulling like 32, 33,000 watts, 33 kilowatts going down track. That seems like a bit much for what amounts to an average of about seven pounds of boost. And the compressor map actually supports that notion. So this is the first step in trying to make this compressor more efficient. And the second step in making this compressor more efficient is already here and it's in the other room. So that means that next video is going to be coming right quick. Thank you so much for watching. Please go ahead and subscribe, put comments down below. Let me know how you think this is going to work. Uh, if it's going to, you know, give us like huge gains or small gains. I think it should give us something. I just don't know what it is. And of course, we are going to share the data with line to line coatings because this is sort of a, uni a unique opportunity for them as well. Catch you all on the next one.